Vue 3.3 is planned to be released this week and with it comes some pretty cool new features. One of them is a new macro called the Find Model. So in this quick video, I'm going to show you what this is and how it might change the way you write your Vue components. So Vue uses a directive called the Model to handle what is called two-way binding. And if you're interested in learning more about this, I just released a video that you can find down below in the description that goes over the vModel directive in more depth. Now the issue that this macro is addressing is the annoyance of using the vModel directive with a component. When vModel gets used on a component, under the hood it attaches a prop called model value by default, and then it also listens for an update event and updates the value of the ref attached. And in the component you then need to define the prop and emit, and then you can create what is called a writable computed property with both a getter and a setter, and attaches value to your input via the vModel directive. Well, with this new define model macro, we no longer have to go through all the hassle of defining this code when using the vModel directive on a component. Now, to demonstrate this, I'm going to switch over to the Vue SFC playground. I'm currently running on 3.3 beta version 5 and I'm in development mode. Also, if you do want to take advantage of this macro without having to use version 3.3, you can install a library called Vue Macros. This will allow you to use this macro without having to upgrade your Vue application to version 3.3. So to begin using this macro, we can create a new variable which we'll just call model value for consistency purposes. And we'll set this equal to the define model macro, which we'll type as a string. Now this macro accepts two parameters. The first is the argument name, and if left empty, it'll default to the model value. This param can be used if you have multiple vModel values that you're defining in this component via vModel arguments. But if you only have one vModel directive and you haven't used any arguments, then you don't need to define this param. The second parameter is an options object, which we can set some values such as the required property or even set in a property called local to enable the prop to be mutated even if the value is not passed using the vModel directive. And I'll come back to elaborate more on this option property here shortly. So under the hood, this macro is declaring the prop as a ref, and it's automatically going to emit the event of update colon prop name whenever the ref gets updated. Now, if we declare the vModel directive and we set it equal to this variable on the input, we will now have two-way binding super simply with one line of code. We no longer have to worry about defining all this additional logic we needed before when using the vModel directive on a component. And as a side note, you can also manipulate this variable in the script tag the same as you would a normal ref. Now I do want to circle back around to the local option property you mentioned earlier. Before I show you this, I do want to put out a disclaimer that this might not be the intended use case for this macro. Now from my knowledge, this allows you to mutate the prop value locally even if it was not passed using the vModel directive. So for example, this means you could technically pass a prop called count to this component. Then we could define a second variable named count and give it a type of number and then set it equal to the defined model macro. We'll pass it a value of count as a string for the first parameter and then a object with the local option property set to true. If you don't pass this local option property, the default value appears to be false. Then in the template, we can add a button with a click event to increment the value by one and I'll put the count variable into the template. And now we can click on the button to update the value of this count prop directly in our component. Now honestly, this portion to me is not something I really quite understand and I'm not sure if this is the intended use case. However, from looking at the documentation for this macro, it does make it appear that way, but definitely let me know if I misinterpreted that. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on this new approach for handling props. I've definitely seen some mixed reviews from the Vue community on this one, but the best part about this is you can still use the current approach going forward. However, I personally feel that this newer approach is much simpler and I think I'll be switching to this going forward unless I come across any edge cases. Anyways, hopefully you did enjoy the video and you learned something new. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe if you're new for more content like this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.